friends. Welcome back to another episode of Two Idiot Girls. Ooh. Welcome back. We missed you. Things look a little different here. <laughs> I got my hair done. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it really well. It looks good. Especially against the uh the curtain. The black curtain. Yeah, it looks it looks awesome. We got rid of the money pieces. I felt like I was a little too old for them. <laughs> not even. It's not even. She's not too old for it. I think more so than anything, she doesn't like how fast the roots grow up. No, it li- it literally makes me hate myself almost immediately as soon as it starts growing. It's so bad, dude. Don't say that. I just like hate looking at myself, so I was like, time to get rid of them. Enough. Well, no, I'm saying because my roots grow so hair, fast. It's so dark so against the red. Way. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I'm, I'm going to start shadow rooting it. And then that way when it grows out, it doesn't look that bad. That's the only way to do it. I know. I learned the hard way for a whole year. <laughs> yeah. I lightened my hair a few times. I, 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 I feel like I've talked about this before, but like I was blonde at one point. Um, it took me a year to get there. And mm-hmm. then I like gave up after like a couple months i was like i'm over it like i can't do it anymore and it's because it, my hair grows way too fucking fast and way too it's so dark, dark. Yeah, like, so dark and with blonde girl no way no. and because my like frequency with which i go to the hair salon is fucking two times a year if that even when i was blonde i was like i don't want to go every six weeks <laughs> what can i do so i don't have to do that anymore and then they were like dye your hair dark again so I did. Yeah. yeah. Mm, that's okay. why I get, if I get my hair done, it's rare. And when I do, I'm like, I'll see you next year <laughs> when I come in for my touch up, which is essentially just to redo my whole head. Yeah. I feel that. I don't have the patience. That's like one of the few things I don't have the patience to upkeep. Yeah. I go get your hair you done. Know what I'm saying, yeah. I love getting my hair done. I'll sit in that chair all day. I don't care. I think it's because I, it takes so long for my hair. Like, when I'm there, like, I have to start at, like, 9 in the morning, and I don't leave till, like, 6 p.m. Oh, really? Because you have so much hair. It takes forever. <laughs> I hate that. And it costs me an arm and a leg on top of that. I feel that. that. That's, yeah, I feel it's that. It's very expensive to do my head, too, especially when I want to do the things that I want to do, which is essentially, like, a balayage or, like, a low light. Mm-hmm. It just takes so long. So that's why I'm like, eh, it's fine. Yeah. That's why I talked about I want to get laser hair removal so bad, but I know you have to keep going back, and I just don't trust that I will. <laughs> like, I don't trust myself. Like, you're even lucky if you get your nails and lashes done on time, dude. That's what I'm saying. And nine times out of ten, it's necessity. Like, I'm working, and I have to look presentable. Yeah, I feel that. That's, like, the only time. Even then, like, now I've gotten used to looking at my face with no lashes, so, like, I don't even give a fuck if those are gone. Dude, when I got back from New York, like, right now, it looks like I have no lashes, and I hate it. Your when lashes got- don't even look that bad, but we're far away. No, I know. So, I'm saying, when I went, when I came back from New York, I was like, God, like, can't stand looking at myself. Then I went and got my lashes done, and I was like, I'm the prettiest girl that's ever existed. Tell you me. can't tell me anything. Nails, same thing. Yeah. But, again, like, it's only, like, max an hour. And it's, yeah. It's That's e- what I'm saying. Easy. Like, yeah. that I can do. Yeah. But, like, I know laser takes a while, especially the first few times you go. I think it gets faster as you go more frequently. Probably. Ugh. That's just, I, and honestly, maybe I should talk about that in therapy because that's one of those things where I, like, I, I don't care about self care because it's not giving me anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no immediate gain for me. So I'm like, whatever. I get the biggest gains as soon as I get my hair done. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, I did get my extensions put in. Yeah. And even that, like the girl who did my extension, she she's amazing. Two and a half hours. Like two and a half, three like, I want to get extensions so bad, but I lo- I have to wash my hair every day. And you can't. I can't with that. And that would kill me. And I kill me. love my hair extensions, but I do think that it proves my theory that if I shaved my head bald, I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't be nearly as hot. Because as soon as this hair got put in my fucking head, my sweating increased yeah, by fucking that's crazy, yeah. 30%. The quarter, it's it's been up this entire quarter that I've had this hair, mm-hmm. which is fucking horrible. Like, no matter how, no matter what I fucking do, when I have a sweater on, bitch, game over. Yeah. Can't wear a hat, can't do any of that. No, we do. You just use your hair as a blanket, like, on the plane. No, for real. Like, when I fly on planes, so you I- get them again? That's what Alex asked me. I don't know. I'm kind of undecided. Maybe. What I do like about it is like, because it's so thick and long, I feel like my hair looks like done to some extent all the time. Yeah, it's like wearing lash extensions. Yeah, essentially. So it's like it cuts my getting ready time in fucking half, which I do enjoy. The one, the only reason I would want to take them out or for a bit. You haven't done an updo in a minute. That's not true. I did one for Beyonce. 
I mean, like a little bun. Yeah, I can't do buns. I could, but it would just be a fucking nightmare. It would look like one of those, like a ottoman on my head, like a poof. <laughs> it would literally be like this, but times times a million. Someone said that every episode they look forward to looking into Remy's wet rat eyes. So and what of it? You can do with that information what you will, but yeah, he's just always att- that. This is literally y'all watching the new episodes. <laughs> That's y'all. You you relate to him, I bet. You guys are the wet rats. Yeah, those are your big wet eyes that look at us. <laughs> um, yeah, what I don't like is that I can't really do any other looks. Like, I can't do wigs or anything like that mm. uh, because my hair's too heavy. And if I thought my legs were lifting, my wigs were lifting before. When you add six more bundles, there's no fucking way. Yeah. It's going to sit on top of my head like a cap. <laughs> so. Like this cap. Like that cap. Yeah, exactly. So we'll see. We'll see how I feel. I have like a couple more weeks before I have to get them out. Oh, we went to Disney for Drew's birthday. It was really fun. We did indeed. It was a blast. My surprises. I'm here to tell you I bought her sunglasses. Yes, she did. <laughs> and I invited Brittany, but told Brittany to tell Drew she couldn't come. Yeah. Like I <laughs> asked Britt, I was like, do you want to come to Disneyland on my birthday? And she was like, oh, damn, I'm going to be in Dallas. I'm so sorry. And she's like, but love you so much. I think you're going to have a blast. I was like, oh, yeah, no, for sure. And then I was like. I remember thinking, I'm like, I wonder if she's lying to me. But then I was like, she wouldn't lie about that. Wrong. And then when I saw her sitting with my whole family, I was like, what the fuck? When I saw her and I was, she was like, got your dumb ass. That's the first thing she said to me. <laughs> In the video that I took, you can hear her saying that. Got your dumb ass. She is so funny. Love her to death. Um, yeah, it was a fucking blast. It was so much fun. Love my family. That includes Brittany. She's part of our family. Um, it was just so much fun. It was fucking. It was good vibes for it sure. It was very, very good vibes, and it was so relaxing. I met quite a few of you, which was mm-hmm. also very fun. Um, but it was just awesome. Yeah, keeping up the tradition. I go to Disney on my birthday every year. It's very fun. It is really fun, you guys. So. And I filmed a vlog of it, and you know where you can find it on the Patreon. That's true. They soon. Do. I don't know when it'll be up, but it will be up soon. <laughs> I think before the end of the month. Probably not. Probably next month, but it'll be up. We'll see. And you'll get to see us. And in there, I rate even more bathrooms around Disneyland for you. Oh, yeah. That is true. So. But it was a very good birthday. Thank you for all of you that wished me a very happy birthday. Appreciate you all. It was amazing. Yeah. It was a good time. It was a good time. Very fun. Do you have any hyperfixations you want to share with everyone? Any type of zoomies you want to get out? I wish I had more sports zoomies, you guys. We filmed that episode so long ago. I don't have any zoomies to share with you about sports. Lots of games have happened since then. I know. Too many. You're so behind on sports. How is my team doing? I honestly don't know. I don't have one. I don't know. (laughs) I genuinely don't know. (laughs) I don't think I have any hyperfixations currently. NFL sports. What's going on? You You typed in NFL sports? No. I changed it to scores. Oh, the Chiefs won today. And then I flash. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> okay, I'm going to test you. Who do you think won in the Chargers versus the Vikings? The Chargers? Just barely. Who do you think won? This game's boring. I already No, yeah, let me see. Oh, you want to guess? Again? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, who won today for, for the Bills versus the Commanders? The Bills. Yeah. What the heck? Period. Who won in the Patriots versus the Jets? The Patriots. Okay. Um, Cardinals versus Cowboys. You're getting them right if I'm not saying yeah. yeah. Cardinals versus Cow- the Cardinals. Yeah. Period. What about the Colts versus the Ravens? Ooh. The Ravens. Wrong. Colts. Oh, dang. They went in OT. That's overtime. Oh, well, then I was. <laughs> That's overtime for you guys. I was close. Who <laughs> won from the Browns versus the Titans? The Browns. Yes. What about those Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Texans? Literally whoever else they played. The Texans. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. The Jaguars won? are not good. That's why. Isn't that um, that kid you did that project on? He's still in the Bronco or Dolphins, right? Who, Tua? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, who do you, they beat the Broncos 70 to 20. 70? 70. That's fucking nuts. That's crazy. For an NFL game, that's fucking crazy. That is insane. So many games, you guys. I, can't, I cannot keep up unless I I've keep been pretty good. Unless I keep the ESPN app, and I'm not doing that because I don't care. I'm that girl in the Remember the Titans. I 
do not I, care. Yeah, literally, and I'm the other girl. What are you going to do? I'd just be like that sometimes. I know. Both our dads are football coaches. <laughs> we have the same dad. <laughs> do we get that so much? Because we say um, my mom, but we have the same parents, you guys. Yeah. It's just, I think it's a brown kid thing to say that. I don't know why. Well, because I don't call my mom mom. So that's why I don't. That's why I say that. I think is when you're telling a story or if I'm telling a story, I don't say our mom. I say my mom. Well, that's because I'm talking to you. Yeah. Not necessarily you. Because most of the stories we tell. Yeah. Like, like we were there. Either there. So or, I'm telling you. Yeah. I know y'all do that too. Come on now. It's a brown kid thing. I saw someone say that. I think it's a minority thing because me and my siblings do that too. Well, and it's also probably because we don't call our parents like mom and dad. Does that make sense? Yeah, I know. Like, I don't use that terminology for my mom and dad. So uh-huh. I think that's another reason why we reference it like that. Dude, by the, guy, the time you're going to see this, we will be back from Perry. True. Did we have fun? I bet we had <laughs> so much fun. Did we have fun? I guess you'll find out. We have to reenact at least one scene from Passport to Paris. But mm. I, I want it. <laughs> I, I can't think of any a scene from those movies. So I want it to like... be us ordering at a French restaurant and I pretend to know French and then he brings me a fish. And then I tell him, I don't want this. And then he yells at me. Stupid. <laughs> Branzino. Branzino a fish. I don't know. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. <laughs> I heard that they don't, I don't be- care. They don't believe in ice out there. Yeah, they don't believe in like ice water, ice coffee. That's insane. And they have no fucking AC, bro. Yeah. Wow. There's AC where we're gonna be at. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I can't live without air, bro. I don't know how you fucking do that shit. I think they have stronger scent or scent, uh, sweat glands. Like they can like suck in their sweat faster or something. No, I think it's because <laughs> nine. 99% of the year, it's like raining and cloudy, hmm. like in the UK, for example. And then that's why it's like, why would I install air? Yeah, that's how, you know um, what I mean? Like, that's how New York is. Yeah, for the, f- the fact that y'all are living like fucking pilgrims is just mind boggling to me. That's crazy. My brother asked if we we're going to visit Notre Dame. That's why he said it. And I told him that I want to visit. That pissed me off when she told me that story. <laughs> And I told him that I want to visit where they filmed Ratatouille. I want to visit all the sets. And they probably don't exist. What? I saw on TikTok that where he almost tries to kill the rat, where he throws him in that water. Oh, that's real. That's like the Seine or whatever. It's like a river. I don't, I've never been. I don't know. I know. I'm just, I've never been either, but I know that. (laughs) (laughs) Like, that's your geography, girl. I don't know what you're saying to me, but um, <laughs> the sand and they have like a big boat that goes down it too. And so there's a whole bunch of boats. Sure. About it, I, w- I want to visit there. And then I also want to visit. That one's real. Yeah, that is. Gusto's. And I want to visit. I don't think Gusto's is real. Um, Linguini's apartment. I don't think that's real either. They should host a tour of his apartment. It's like the fucking friends tour in New York, but it says <laughs> it's just Ratatouille <laughs> landmarks. Like when we went to New York, I was like, I wish we could go to Jersey because I want to do a tour of all the Sopranos places that they film stuff. What are you going to do? This is what it is. But maybe we'll get to meet Remy. I'm pretty excited about that. I met a bunch of Remy's when I was in New York recently. <laughs> <laughs> I saw met a whole bunch, bunch of, of his them. cousins. Yeah. Saw a ton of them. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm tired, but I'm excited. Same, same. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be fun. You tell us. Do we have fun? What's it fun? First okay. Europe trip. Fun. We'll see. Is there any other Zoomies you want to share? No. Okay, so for this week's episode, we decided to do a Q&A because we haven't done one in a while. Mm. The year is almost over. This is episode 40 out of 52. Isn't that crazy? That is pretty crazy. For the year. I don't even know how many that is. We're like over 90 something. I'm pretty sure from last year. (gasps) Fun. I think this might be our 90th episode. I don't remember. Anyways, I'm very excited. I don't think so. You think it's more? All right, friends, we're going to take a quick little break. And this is with our friends at Babbel. So what do you call a person who speaks three languages? Trilingual. Someone who speaks two? Bilingual. Someone who speaks one? American. LOL. (laughs) Only 22% of Americans speak a language other than English at home. Start learning a new language this fall and be the exception, not the rule. Because with Babbel, you start speaking a new language in just three weeks. 
Why Babbel? Because it works. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or fooling yourself with language apps that are a little more than games, Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove Babbel is better. For instance, one study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription but only for our listeners at babble.com slash two idiot girls get 55% off at babble.com slash two idiot girls spelled b-a-b-b-e-l.com slash two idiot girls rules and restrictions may apply now back to the episode no i don't think it's 90 no it might be more because we filmed 50 last year and if this is our 40th one for this year it's 90 and then you add the first five from the year before Oh, okay. So this is like the 95th, 96th episode. Mm. What the heck? We're almost to 100. We have to celebrate. Okay, so we haven't done a Q&A in a while. The year is almost over. We thought it would be fun to do one with y'all. Yep. So I've seen a lot of our, my friends doing this on their podcast. I'm like, that looks really fun. Well, we've done so many, but also like you guys really love when we do them. So why not? Why not give the people what they're asking for? I found out I was going to Paris three days ago. So what do you want from me? <laughs> I guess is my real question. We thought we'd do this. Yeah. Okay. So um, the very, literally the very first one we got is from someone named Spencer. Mm -hmm. She said, other than your impact on the planet, what is your favorite accomplishment that brings you so much joy and maybe a tear or two? Deep. Right out the gate. I would say two different ones. One of them would be getting to retire my parents. That one for sure. A few other people too. Um, That's like one of my greatest accomplishments. My parents... You guys know this, like my parents, they became parents very, very young and they like, you know, they did, they moved mountains to like give us a a beautiful, wonderful life, like a fulfilled life, even when we had no money, like no money at all. So we never wanted for anything that we absolutely needed because my parents always made sure we had it and we felt loved and supported. So getting to be in a position now where I get to take care of them and they don't have to work anymore if they don't want to. That's like one of the best things I would say. The other part I think would be like the representation of it all. Mm -hmm. Um, Both of those things make me very emotional when I think about them because I feel like growing up, like especially like Dace and I, we never had that. Like I never had anybody who looked like me. Or talked like me or laughed no. like me. Or- it was literally The Rock. That's why we talk about him so much. Yeah. But even then, like, he wasn't known as a personality until, like, within the last, like, yeah, 10 years. Yeah, but I'm just saying he's our only form of representation we yeah. have for so long. Yeah. And that part was cool. But I never got to see, like, some women that looked like me and that were, they laughed like me and, and were raised like me and they come from families like mm-hmm. mine. Like, I never got to see anything like that as a kid. And then also, I think... Um, being able to be representative in a way that's not solely reliant on my like physical capabilities. Like I'm not known for being a famous athlete. I'm known for being funny. You know what I mean? That kind of representation too is important to me. So I would say those two things. What about you? Yeah, I would definitely say re- the representation ones make me cry the most. Like especially, especially you being gay. Yeah, when they yeah. say like, like when I get like you're like the queer Pacifica representation I've always wanted. Like those yeah. ones make me cry the most. Um, for sure. I think like as a personal accomplishment, I think all all of the growth I've experienced over the last two years has been, um, something I never thought I could be capable of. Yeah. Um, all by yourself. Look at you. Yeah. And that, that like is huge because if you're in a long-term relationship and here's like kind of tea, but not really, like if you're in a relationship with someone and if you don't even count them, like you're just thinking about yourself, if you don't like yourself at all and you're with someone and you've been with them for, for a, while. a long time, like yeah. and I'll speak on my own behalf. Like I thought I was ugly and annoying and stupid and I could never have friends. Even after she was with someone for like, a I'm long with time. someone who like yeah. clearly likes me and thinks I'm attractive. And I'm like, no, I'm ugly. Like, it's not their fault. Like that's on me. But like, 
there's something there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like that, like your body, like, you know, they say like your body will react first. Yeah. So I threw, <laughs> I was throwing up consistently for almost two years. That's why I had to change my diet so severely. That's also true. So I'm yeah. just saying like, if I can go from that and thinking I'm like incapable of having friends and having my own experiences on my own, mm -hmm. um, especially queer ones in terms of making queer friends, I never thought in a million years I could ever do that. Yeah. That's why I'm so grateful to like my cousins, Josh and Mayo and my best friend, Carrie and people like that. And even Brittany, like I never thought in a million years I could ever make well, even my own like, friends. Even like you know Jordan, like yeah, no Sandra Jordan, and Jordan. Sam, yeah. I mean, those are all of them. I never Danelli. I never would have thought I could make my own friends ever mm -hmm. and have my own life experiences. I thought I was always just going to be like I thought there was something wrong with me, and that's why I didn't have friends. Which is like what I tell everyone. Like, are I you getting Carrie, emotional? No. Oh, I thought you were. No. I was like bracing in case you did. No, but I told Carrie that, that on her birthday. That would make me emotional. Yeah, I told Carrie that on her birthday. I said I always thought when I was with my ex I could never have friends, and I don't know why. Yeah, um, I don't that know. was the case. Yeah. So it's just like shedding off parts of your skin that are holding your back, holding you back in certain ways. So all of that to say is, I never would have thought in 2021 days since she would never have thought I could look the way that I look right now in terms of getting my hair, my septum, my tattoos and all that shit. The fucking nails. These mm -hmm. nails are huge to me, right? Um, I never could have thought I could look and live my life the way that I do right now two years ago. There's like no way. Yeah. Like that's nutty. And that's a huge thing. So that's too. a huge accom personal accomplishment yeah, to myself. Absolutely. So there you have it. There you have it, Spencer. Okay. <laughs> this next one from Cassie. She said, would y'all move back to the state you went to college in? I would 100% move back to Oregon. I love Oregon. If it wasn't gentrification, yeah, I would. <laughs> if it was like, uh, you know, uh, if I could do it in a way that wasn't harmful or uprooting mm. local people, then hell yeah, I would. I'd, I feel that. I, in Hawaii, I do like consider Hawaii like a second home because I did live there for a very long time. But like. I just, it's one of those things where when I was in Hawaii recently, I like had kind of posted it, posted about it saying like, I feel so much more myself when I'm in Hawaii, like, or any sort of mostly specifically Hawaii. And then someone messaged me and told me that they, they like uh, study anthropology and stuff. And they talked about how like indigenous people specifically, um, but all people who have some sort of culture, like where the land where their people come from kind of thing but especially indigenous people, because we have so many different kinds of beliefs. Like we believe in like, you know, the, the kinds of like gods we believe in or like mm -hmm. we believed in back in the day or like the earth and shit like that. Um, she said there, there is something there's, it's like, there's a word for it or a terminology for it where you feel so connected to your ancestors that you like heal. Mm -hmm. So she, she was basically telling me like when you go there and like your skin clears up and like, your bloating goes away and you stop stressing and your anxiety is not that high. A lot of times she says that's like literally you're being healed because you're, you're close to your people. And it's just like this connection. It sounds like more spiritual than it is, but because, because we are indigenous, I do like, I do believe in stuff like that. Yeah, me too. So like the, the energy, the mana, that's what they call it in, in Hawaiian. Um, it's just like so strong when I go there and I just like, I love, every single day I'm there. Like, I just feel so happy and fulfilled mm -hmm. and like relaxed and like in a way that I feel like I'm more at home. I agree. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would absolutely would. If I could do it in a way that wasn't harmful, absolutely. I, would. I feel that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This next one's from Maya. She said, how did the hashtag Instagram thing start? <laughs> oh my God. You That's have, a great question. You owe them an explanation. I honest to God, I don't remember what I saw that made me want to do it. I do. If you're going to say Harry Styles, you're wrong. That was the first time I ever saw it. Not me. When I saw him doing that, I was already doing that. Mm. I had done it like once or twice before that. Didn't sure. do it every time. I was never a multiple. If you scroll back far enough, I don't use a thousand hashtags in my um I'm not saying Instagram. that. No, I'm saying that was th the thing back in the day. Sure. Like in the very inception of of instagram because mm -hmm. i got my instagram what year were we the avatars your junior year my senior year so like 2011 2012 dang you were a senior when we did that yeah because my junior year i was snooky for halloween that was a good one. Oh yeah okay so when we were the avatars i re i specifically remember that halloween like that day we dressed up that was the first time i downloaded instagram and i like created an account and i took a picture of myself like a selfie and i posted it and it's even funnier because all the makeup is off the center of my face and I still posted it. 
<laughs> didn't give a fuck. Didn't care at all. Blind confidence. Um, but anyways, <laughs> I don't remember exactly what I saw. I do remember seeing the Harry Styles thing and being like, oh, I fuck it. I've done that before. And then I think like I just decided to do it. I don't even remember. You guys tell me. I'm sure some of you can scroll back far enough. But like, when did I start it? You tell me. I just started doing that. And then I was like, I think I'm just going to do this every single time. And then now, like I did it all throughout college. I did, I did it through high school. I did it throughout college. And now it's just like a thing I have to do. Like, I feel like I married myself to the bit and now I have no choice but to mm. continue. So now it's just a thing. But I did remember seeing, I think I had seen it on um, Twitter before. Like, um, it was like a version of that, like a hashtag kind of thing. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Like, it's like related to it, but it's yeah. not. You know what I'm saying? Or it's like something you want to add to your caption, but you don't. Mm -hmm. I had seen that kind of vibes there. And then me trying to be like a different kind of trendsetter. I like moved it to <laughs> another. I just like ripped it off and moved it somewhere else. Just changed it a little bit. I'm not saying I didn't steal it from someone. I'm just saying I don't remember who. Sure. I don't remember who I ripped off that bit from. But now it's just something I'm married to. I have to do it forever now. I feel that. Sorry, guys. Caption credit to whoever started it. Yeah. The yeah. only time I don't do it or I haven't done it recently is when I have to post an ad. And that's just because they don't like when I <laughs> add more shit. Belez Instagram. <laughs> I've literally asked, like, can I add this? And they're like, no. Vibrator Instagram. <laughs> if it's missing, like if it's not in there, it's an ad. That's why I can't. <laughs> they won't let me put it in there. But some ads, they don't give a fuck. But some of them they do. So Okay, this next question is from Kat. She said, my questions for Dason. And I want to know who her favorite character from Teen Wolf is styles I'm a, I will not elaborate did you even really did you watch any other episodes of Teen Wolf like yeah. did you watch any did you watch all the seasons I watched like probably the first like two maybe three seasons and then Dang, that's a lot my ex ended up watching all of it again because she had never watched it and then I watched the last season and it's it, pretty kooky it could, it's like Vampire Diaries like it, if you thought it was crazy like it gets even crazier like there's this part Vampire Diaries is better than Teen Wolf and I've watched Teen Wolf I watched the first like season and half of the second one I don't agree with you because I think everyone in Teen Wolf is way hotter than they are in wrong. Vampire Diaries so wrong I did a Vampire Diaries ranking on my TikTok. You're only thinking of Dylan O'Brien. No, Tyler Posey's hot too. So is Tyler Hecklin. So is Colton Haynes. Well, you said Styles was your favorite yeah, character. Yeah, because Dylan so, O'Brien's the hottest. I know. Thing. That's why I said that's why I mentioned Dylan O'Brien. No, I know, but I there are hot people in Vampire Diaries too. I know. Yeah, the hottest guys because I wasn't really attracted to any of the roles. The hottest guys in Vampire Diaries uh. are Klaus. <laughs> Rippa Klaus and you're not gonna agree with me on this one okay it's uh <laughs> Jeremy no I mean in the later seasons like when they made him fucking jacked for no dude yeah my TVD girls <laughs> when Jeremy comes back in like season four or five and all of a sudden he's six eight He's got 2% body fat and he's shirtless in every scene. Yeah. What the fuck, bitch? And that's why he's number one. And you know who goes to number negative 100 billion in hell? Who? Matt Donovan. I hate him. Who the fuck is that? Oh, that's the, the normal guy. <laughs> yeah, he sucks. He doesn't suck. He does in the beginning. And then no, he, he's just jealous. That's normal. No, and he's like annoying throughout the whole show. Dude, the thing about, about Matt, his character, like, first of all, I think he's the only sane one really out of well, all of them. He's the only, he's the only one that nothing ever happened. Like he doesn't turn into a vampire. He doesn't turn into a werewolf. He doesn't turn, he doesn't turn into shit. Mm. He stays human the whole time. That's like, that's a feat. But first of all, fuck that friend group. Like they send that bitch to die all the time. Like same Him thing Bonnie. with Bonnie. Yeah. Same thing with Bonnie. Bonnie was my favorite girl character. Bonnie yeah. justice. I love Rebecca was also hot. I forgot about her. Oh yeah. She's honestly she's so the whole Mickelson, whatever. Yeah, that, all of them. Yeah. That lineage. All of them. Cole, yeah. Holy shit. What was the other one? Not Elijah. Nate. Yeah. Ooh, he was good All too. of them are great. Sexy. Yeah. You know, what's funny too is like, it's like how they cast the Cullens. Like you're like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah. they don't look alike, but they do. Who? <laughs> Describe <laughs> Tony Stadovici. He described us as the Cullens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stupid. Oh my god. Yeah, so and mad. I wonder which one I am. Alice. Oh, it's me, like kicking my foot up. Which one of them's gay? It's gonna be Alice. She's so queer coded. Look at her yeah. haircut. Look at her haircut, and she feels things. You're yeah. Alice. I'm Edward. <laughs> no, I'm Emmett. <laughs> no, you're Rosalie. <laughs> I want to not be, even. I want to be Jackson. Is that his name? Jasper. Yeah, rattle scars. Yeah. 
All right, friends, we're going to take a quick little break. And this was with our friends at Julie. So if you've ever had unprotected sex, forgot your birth control, had a condom broke, or you're just not sure, we're super excited to talk about a new company that is giving emergency contraception a much needed rebrand. Me and Drew are both huge advocates for uh, emergency contraception and things similar to that. So we're really excited to be working with Julie. So Julie is an FDA approved morning after pill that helps stop a pregnancy before it starts. Julie is aiming to be the emergency contraception company for the next generation. One of learning and acceptance, not stigma and shame obsessed. When it comes to complex and stressful choices around your health, they believe people deserve products that are easy in every way, easy to find, easy to take, easy to relate to, and easy to understand. Julie stops your body from releasing an egg using the same active ingredient as plan b or other morning after pills essentially julie works by preventing or delaying your ovulation with no egg there's no fertilization and therefore no pregnancy and it's no risk to future fertility julie just launched at cvs but you can also find julie at target walmart stores across the u.s you can also order online to have for the future just in case it's legal in all 50 states this is so important that you hear this you do not need an id prescription or credit card to get it Right now, Julie is offering our listeners $10 off your online purchase. Go to juliecare.co slash 2idiotgirls to get $10 off your online purchase for a limited time. That's juliecare.co slash 2idiotgirls. Or if you need it right away, you can find Julie at your nearest CVS, Target, or Walmart today. Now back to the episode. Jasper. He's a Jackson Jasper. Who the hell's Jackson? <laughs> Jackson Earls? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's something Wait, else. Wait, Jackson Earls. <sighs> it's Jason Earl. I know. That was so embarrassing. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm losing it. Wait, there was something else I was going to say. His about name's Jackson Vampire in Bears. the show. Yeah. Stuart. That's his last name. <laughs> How many Wait, days, there's something. I just want to ask you something really random. What? How many times a day do you think about the Roman Empire? <laughs> Girl. You're my boyfriend. Okay, first of all, I saw someone make this take. I forget who it was. But I was like, that is the literal first thing I said when I saw this Roman Empire bullshit. And of course, I saw it first or saw it very early on. I saw I saw it like two weeks ago, but I didn't understand it. So I don't pay attention to it. I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know what that fucking means. But it's like it was literally a video of this guy explaining why men care about the Roman Empire. And then I was when I got tagged in it a million times, I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Like, why are you showing me that? Because I was saying, like, I don't understand why I'm being tagged in this because he's not antagonizing anyone. Mm -hmm. He's just like explaining why they love the Roman Empire. And I'm like, who's first of all, who's they? Which is just it's just toxic masculinity, right? Yes. But also like. This is the take that I said that was literally mirrored in someone else. Oh, I think it was Talia. I think she posted one, but like she posted one like yesterday or something. The take is literally this. Uh, If they like the Roman Empire so much, do they remember what happened? It fell. Do you guys remember that? Why? Because they were in charge. It just it didn't work is my point. Like you could talk. We could sit here and talk all day about the Roman Empire, but like. Another thing I said, you're not thinking about the actual Roman Empire. You're thinking about the movie 300. Okay. And that's a great point. And that's Sparta. Like that's yeah. Spartans. Like it's just like, that's what you're, you're not thinking about the actual yeah. Roman Empire because the actual Roman Empire also had women that were very pivotal in the success of no, it. I know. But it still fell is my point. Yeah. So you're not actually thinking about that. You're thinking about Gerard Butler fucking 15 years ago like that's literally yeah. what you're thinking about so we went to i went to breakfast with josh and mayo yesterday with mommy and daddy yeah and josh asked my daddy he goes burns how often do you think about the roman empire <laughs> and my dad has no like online presence like he like the, so he doesn't understand trends and then At he all. goes the what <laughs> and he goes the roman empire like how often a day do you think about it and he goes mm, i don't know and then he goes the answer is never and then he goes well i like movies about it so he's being honest <laughs> And then, but do you see how my dad's like? <laughs> I would watch a movie with it. And then Josh my dad's goes, not dying to see Josh a movie. Goes, well, do you think about things with it that are not in movies? And he goes, "No." Like I like the movies, but I'm not thinking about and that like stuff. movies or just that one movie. No, because you could think you could count Troy in there. Um, but I know. But I'm saying like when you think of the Roman Empire, like just off the dome, you're like, let me think about what's a movie with the Roman Empire. The first one you I think, think of, of Troy. Is, I didn't think I of 300. Think, yeah. Okay, film film major. Is Russell Crowe in that? No, he's in a different one, but I forget which one it's called. What's that one? No, that's the one. Troy. Troy's the one with, well, I know Brad Pitt's in that one. Maybe he's in that one too. It's the one where they're fighting in the Coliseum, right? I'm pretty sure. I don't remember. Dang. That's what I was like. You're thinking of. Yeah, Brad Pitt's in it. I know, but is is Russell Crowe in it or no? 
And he is not. No. Oh, well, Russell Crowe, I think Russell Crowe plays a, a king in a Roman Empire No, time, I, I know right? exactly what you're talking about. I'm saying yeah. I can't think, I think that's the one with um, Angelina Jolie. Oh, okay, okay. Well, then we're thinking of two different ones. Oh, no, Angelina Jolie's in Troy. <laughs> oh, shit. Russell I don't even fucking know Troy. I don't Crow. even know that. <laughs> Gladiator, that's the other one. Oh, what the fuck? I'm so stupid. That's like a, such an obvious one. I'm I literally so stupid. kept saying, I kept it in my head. I was like, I thought it was like, isn't that one about Alexander the Great? Fuck if I know, to be honest. Well, see, that's, you know, what's even crazier is like gladiator seems like a more obvious option, but I, I only think of 300. And the only reason I do is because it focuses on Sparta. Cause you know, he's like, are you not enjoying this? Oh, or you're not entertained. Yeah. That's what he says. <laughs> the way you said it was like, <laughs> it was like someone not trying to get copyrighted. Yeah. Do you not like you're having fun right now? Are you not enjoying the Are show? Are you not having a great time at the show? His character's name is Maximus. Yeah. Dang. Joaquin Phoenix is in this one. I didn't know that. Oh, All I know is- That's a Ridley Scott movie. I was thinking Troy was. It focuses on Sparta. That's why I always think you're not even thinking of Gladiator. You're not even thinking of Troy. You're thinking of 300. That's like, that's the movie you're thinking of. And you're thinking of- Gerard Butler's sexy shirtless body. Like that's what they're th picturing in their head. And that picture of him yelling on the front cover. Like that is literally what they're thinking of. Yeah. And then he, he Sparta kicks that guy. That too. But I just mean like, and there's a really good looking lady in that movie. I remember that. Yeah. And the, I remember like the, the cinematography of it is very different. The coloring in it is kind of creepy. It's very strange. Yeah. yeah. It's like kind of spooky. Either way, either way. What's your Roman empire? My Roman Empire is that that Pepsi commercial with Beyonce, Britney Spears, and Pink, and they're all they're all fighting in the Coliseum. That's a good that's one. the real Roman Empire. Let me think of an actual one. Uh, mine is the show Fleabag, and also Normal People. Those are my those are my Roman empires. Oh, you're talking about actual movies? No, I'm saying like in no, a, but in situations I think about all the time. In I think occurrence. Of, yeah, I think about Fleabag all the time. Really, all the time. Season two. If you I think it. about Elvis's eating habits, <laughs> that's my Roman Empire. You ever watch those YouTube that videos? Makes sense. Look them up. They're you talked about them enough last year. They're they unbelievable. They're, like they they, they truly are. Um, I cannot believe not one of these movies has talked about it. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. Who's to say that the new one won't? Like as soon as I see any sort of like, you know, someone found out this about Elvis. Click when it has to do with his eating. Click. I'm gonna. I think about that a lot. When I, when I happen to see calories on a menu and I'm like, if you times that by a hundred, that's what he used to eat every day. That's my Roman I think about Fleabag every day of my life. That's fair. Okay. This next one's from Cheyenne. She had two questions, but I'm going to pick one of them. So who is your dream blunt rotation? And it could Fucking be like, me. it could be people we don't know too. Like it could be famous people. I don't know. I would never want to get high with people. I don't know. I would. Okay. I would. I'm not guaranteed. I don't think I would have a good time necessarily, but I would like to. Okay. I've just smoked enough weed now that I feel like I would be okay in a situation with uh, with people I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I would never smoke a stranger's weed if that makes sense. No, like you're there with your pen and they're here. We go, yeah. Or oh, possibly, like here at my house, yeah. kind of thing. Like if if they were like in my living room and yeah, I was you bought a blunt and so you're like, they were on my and we're like in my backyard smoking it together. Yeah. Who's Dang. in there? No squid for sure. <laughs> no way. He's he's cut off from anything that's not kibble. Um, <laughs> or trash. Or tra yeah, or things on the ground. Okay, if I could then, if it was if we're only talking like creators or like famous people. Yeah. It'd be like you, me, and Billy. Okay. I'm going to throw Adam in there because we've done that. Okay. He counts. We're in New York again, and then I'm singing, yeah. I'm singing again for and then no Jason reason. Jason makes a noise for no reason, and then swears up and down that she's fine. I did not say that. Is that sound? Home? You did, but it's okay. I have three witnesses, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> like it you was were my body. I remember, <laughs> and it was my ears and two other sets of ears. <laughs> um, the funniest part about that story is you never deny that you made a weird noise. You just don't like the one that I use. Yeah, exactly. I'm Wrong. not a liar. I'm a truther. Wrong. Who's in there? Okay, the four of us. Yeah, the four of us. Okay. Brittany. Okay. Taffy. That would be fun, yeah. Throw a couple of freaks in there. Grace. <gasps> fun. That would be fun. Freaks. Not freaks. You already said Grace. That's one freak. Ah, come on. <sighs> And that's it. If that, if that's, if I'm, if I'm doing like, if, I mean, that's all I can think of. If I was doing like a realistic circle. Okay. If I'm doing a fucking unhinged circle. Yeah. 
the three of us again. Okay. Brittany, because she has to be there. Yeah. Of course. I'm going to throw Beyonce in there. Mm. Ed Sheeran. Okay. Paul Hollywood from The Great British Baking Show. Yeah, he'd be a good time. Timothy Chalamet. Timothy Chalamet. Throw him in there. I agree. That's fucking weird and unhinged, and I would for sure do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Beyonce and Paul Hollywood in the same building. <laughs> if I could get all those people in one in one room, I think like it would be like when the you, you just put two atoms together and then it just opens the space time continue. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I think I would unlock the secrets to the universe. Like the that. movie with um, uh, is it called like Unstoppable or what was that movie with Bradley Cooper where he takes that pill and oh, then Limitless? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why do literally. I not know the name to anything? Are you not enjoying the show? <laughs> this was like you doing like a trademark free. <laughs> copyright free like a bootleg Same, version yeah. of it yeah uh-huh. for mine what about yours? i don't want to get high with anyone just me okay by myself dream blunt um okay the three of us Brittany. Mm-hmm. um <laughs> i don't know that would be funny i'd love that and be good. except Brittany, right so pedro pascal's yeah. there of course you just put all of Brittany's crushes and all all ghost room. from call of duty <laughs> yeah He's like fully sentient too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll say like <laughs> uh, Paul Mescal. Interesting. Because I think he's handsome. Mm-hmm. And then who's my girl crush right now? I don't want her there. I just want men. I'm kind of attracted. We'll throw Travis Kelsey in there. That's fucking weird. And we'll bring Jason. So this, all the siblings are there. Okay. Nah. Okay. You're right. We'll sub him <laughs> out. Kidding. Put Squid in there. <laughs> no. And then we'll put Florence Pugh. There you go. Dude, imagine Travis Kelsey and fucking Pedro Pascal having a conversation. Or even Paul Mescal. Isn't he Irish or something? Yeah, he is. Imagine them having a conversation. That'd be crazy. That would be pretty crazy. That would be fun. I think that it's would like be a good time. It's like all men and just me, you, and Brittany. Well, now I'm scared. Hilarious. Bring Teffy. Oh, and then I want Florence Pugh there. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that would round it off right there. Love that. Miss Flo. Mm-hmm. Period. Love that. Okay, this next one's from Lexi. She said, what's the funniest thing that's happened to the both of you while together and apart? The funniest thing that's around it? And there's no way I could ever. I can never. Because everything that happens with us is so funny. One time. I literally called Dason like three nights ago because I watched a TikTok that was so unbelievably funny. What's his real name? I don't know. I only know his TikTok name, which is Moschino Dorito. Yeah. And he makes us laugh a lot. And he posted a (laughs) TikTok. I'm not kidding. Like it, I was crying. I was literally sobbing and I FaceTimed her while I was crying, laughing. And I was like, please watch the TikTok. My God. And I just wanted, I wanted to watch her watch it. (laughs) And the way he was like, he's just like, if you're a micrometer, here's the, I put it in my fucking story, but here's the premise of it. He's like in desperation trying to open an emodium, which is like stops diarrhea. (laughs) And when you, you know, when you, sometimes when you tear those, Per, like perforated like fucking like pills, pills. like you're taking like Sudafed like, or like a Benadryl yeah, yeah, yeah like they're all in those little gray things that you have to pop it out <laughs> he's like pissed off because he tore it and it's like it's still closed and he's like complaining about it but he's like what is this shit but at the end he goes if you're a micromillimeter off the perforation it is titanium <laughs> it's carbon fiber <laughs> holy fuck dude i laughed my god i laughed for so- we were laughing like we were like like we were there when he filmed oh it my like god dude that like we laughed in silence for like 20 minutes and then i sent a voice now uh i sent him i, I actually text Brittany, <laughs> like because we have a group chat <laughs> but I, I had text Brittany like uh, about the conversation and like she sent me a voice note of her laughing really fucking hard. <laughs> I didn't send a voice note. She did <laughs> like I text her about it and she sent me a she sent me a voice note of her laughing really hard. OK, something funny that recently happened besides that. What during the pandemic, did you guys play with that app called House Party before you could like group <laughs> oh, FaceTime yes. with people and you could play games on there? It's basically just like a group FaceTime. Yeah, though. it was before you could group FaceTime. You, yeah. should, you could only FaceTime one person at a time. Yeah. Anyway, so we were on it and uh, <laughs> I was pretty drunk. We were on it with like random people. Like too. old like friends. Like random, random as in like they're like friends of my parents. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So anyways, we were on it 
And I was kind of drunk. Drew was not. Yeah. And so they were like, okay, see you guys later. And so everyone was hanging up, but I couldn't hang up fast enough because I couldn't figure out how to do it. Me too. And then we were, I was under the influence of something else. Yeah. And it was just, it was weird. Yeah. <laughs> so it was just us just staring at each other. For the like, ever, just think like you're in a Zoom meeting and everybody logs out except you and the host. All right, friends, I'm going to take a quick little break, and this is with our friends at ZocDoc. Have you ever been on the hunt for a new doctor and you ask literally everyone you know for their recommendation? You know, a doctor who actually gets you, listens to you, and makes you feel super comfortable. And finally, after weeks of searching, you find the one. Maybe you both have the same rising sign, or maybe you both have the same ice cream flavor. I don't know, but you feel super close to them, and that I honestly are the best doctors to have. So you call their office and they have an appointment available, but then the receptionist tells you that this perfect doctor doesn't take your insurance. Wipe your tears, put away the ice cream, and head over to ZocDoc to find and book the doctor who is right for you and takes your insurance. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated, patient-reviewed, that's so important, doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for, period. These docs all have verified reviews from actual real patients, not bots. The average wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between 24 to 48 hours. That's it. You can even score some same-day appointments. If I needed this product, this is exactly what I would use to help me find my doctor. So all of you can visit ZocDoc.com slash two idiot girls and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's ZocDoc.com slash two idiot girls. ZocDoc.com slash two idiot girls. Now back to the episode. But we weren't hosting the party. So like we logged out and it was just a, and it, it just it shrunk to one frame and it was just the two of us staring at each other like this. And then we stayed on for 20 more minutes just laughing because we were like, that's so embarrassing that we were the last two in here. Like, and it's not even ours. Like, we didn't even host it. Uh, no, you know how on Zoom, if the host ends it, it, it ends a whole meeting. Yeah. But I still click off because I don't want to be stuck on same. it because that's happened to me. That's so not, same with Google chat. They're like saying goodbye while I clicked on end already. I'm like, okay, see you later. Leave. And that's not how house party worked. <sighs> but the other day, like a couple nights ago, we were on FaceTime. I was like, okay, I'll talk to you later. She's like, okay. Then I was trying to click that end thing, like to end the thing. And then we were both still staring at each other. <laughs> And it pissed me off. That makes me laugh a lot when we do that on accident. Because I, I only do that with you. I don't do it with anyone else. I know. It's so funny, dude. Together, like, I don't, I don't know, dude. Like, where do we begin, really? Just, like, this is not a joke. But, like, when people hang out with us. Well, first of all, obviously, we love to tell stories. And we tell we talk about silly shit that happens to us all the time. Yeah. But, like, when we tell ta- tell other people outside of our family about shit that happens to us. A lot of times they're like, I don't know why things like this always happen to you guys. And I was like, <laughs> fucking same. I don't either. Which is why it's really hard to narrow it down yeah. because the silliest things in life happen to the two of us. I don't, I don't know why that is. I don't know what type of curse, I guess you could call, I don't know what you call that, but there is it's something. Just like, it's like, it's just silly. Like it's yeah. like the most embarrassing things in a very silly way happen to us all the time. Truly. Which makes us laugh, but then I just, like, that's what makes it hard. Like, I don't know what I did to deserve that, but, like, I, sure, you know. <laughs> it's, just, <laughs> it's just so bizarre. It's really weird. Yeah. And then what was the other half of the question? Like, funniest things that have happened apart. I think the funniest things that have ever happened to me, most of the time they happen when we're together. I mean, probably just stuff that happened to me in college. So when I told Drew about the yes, taxi cab driver or when I fell off my bike holding my weenies con huevos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when I um fell in the Alamo bus at the <laughs> at the airport, like I literally shot back like I was a stunt double. That was pretty funny. You're right. And I fell the entire length of the Alamo bus. Not one person tried to stop me or help me. <laughs> Love that. I crashed into the bus driver. That's how I stopped. <laughs> That's literally what broke my fall. He's was all, that? Ow! And then literally the driver was annoyed at me. And then um my friend's mom was like. That's how you know you're young, because I would have fell a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first thing she said to me. Stupid. Love that. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. It's not a very good yeah, answer to your usually question. usually funny stuff happens together. And then, like, when we're not apart and something funny happens, we'll call to tell the other person. as Immediately. Like, yeah. Imme- like, like, Donovan's comedy routine. Like, yeah. she literally called me and was like, dude, you need to watch this video. Yeah. And she FaceTimed me, and we watched it together, and I've never laughed harder. If anything, the funniest thing that's ever happened to me is that. 
Yeah. And my <laughs> entire that, life is that. Is that comedy routine, witnessing it live. Yeah. And I literally. And I, I saw it live on camera. I wish I got to see it live in person. Literally, I look for that video like every six months. <laughs> so I saved it in my phone in an album for itself called Donnie's Comedy Routine. So I don't lose it. It's in there. That, yeah. You know what? I changed my answer. That's the funniest that's thing. That's the that's funniest ever thing that's ever happened to us. To the yeah. two of us. <laughs> Both <laughs> individually and together. Yeah. <laughs> True. It's that. Okay, this next one's from Sarah. She said, how do you guys feel about the new judges for this season of The Voice? (laughs) (laughs) You're you're so fucking dumb, dude. (laughs) Do you even know who the judges are? (laughs) Yeah, I actually do. Because I saw a TikTok on it. I looked it up. Literally this morning. Because I didn't know. Who's on it? Niall Horan. Woo! Uh, when I say that, that's me uh, flashing. Just Reba. So you know. Yeah. Gwen Sing Stefani. Mama works too, just. Gwen Stefani and John Legend. Yeah. See, no Kelly Clarkson? I'm out. I'm not going to watch it. Like, everyone was like, oh, it's Blake's last. Eh. I'm not watching. Unless, even, even Blake, like, cool. but I'm like, not watching unless Kelly Clarkson. No, Kelly, that. I'm out. The, I, I don't I honestly I don't think they'll ever be able to top the season with Ariana Grande. Even the season me and Billy watched was pretty good. No, I know. With but Niall I'm, as a first time coach, like that was good. But I'm just saying that was like the best one. I agree. Because it had Kelly Clarkson and Ariana Grande. And John Legend. And, and John Boy. Legend. And when I die, I wanna come back as a country, country boy. boy. Do you think that's why they brought Reba on there? Because she's gonna be she's gonna be repping for all the country boys on there. I would assume so because she's replacing Blake. So like that's like she's like the country coach kind of thing. I guess country vibes. I guess. Okay, this next one's from Zainab or Zenab. She said, "What were your favorite songs that Beyonce performed live and why?" Love you both. And I took my mom to Renaissance, so we just want to hear your takes. Oh my gosh, how fun. Um, first of all, all of them. Yeah. But if I were to pick some faves, um, uh, before I go, that's one of my faves. Yes. Um, I think it's before I let go, buddy. Oh, before I let go, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um, plastic off the sofa. <gasps> you stole mine. And Diva, I was gonna say I Diva haven't listened to Diva in so long. Yeah, Diva's a great one. Even um, Dangerously in Love, the one she starts yeah, with. Yeah, the one she opens with. I, I love that version yeah, of Dangerously in Love. That's one of my favorite albums of hers is that initial one. The one that she's like. Yeah. One of my faves. <laughs> yeah. Before I Let Go, Plastic Off the Sofa, Dangerously in Love. Yeah. Um, I liked Energy. I thought that one was really <gasps> yeah, fun. Yeah, that one's so Honestly, fun. My favorite part of the whole show, other than Beyonce herself, is the little gay runway they do at the very end. Love that. That's one of my favorite parts of the whole show. That's why I said top to bottom show perfection. No notes, so fun. no edits, no nothing. Yeah. Love it from top to bottom. But if my, if I was picking my, my standouts, like the ones where I get really excited to listen to even like alien superstar is so fun yeah. to listen to. Break my um, soul. Like, yeah. Like cozy. Ugh, cozy. So fun. That's a great one. Virgo's groove. All of it. All of it. A hundred percent. But if but, I was to pick off the top of my head. Yeah. I, oh, I would say minor plastic off the sofa. Cause I didn't know she was going to do that one. Um, diva. Uh, oh, fuck, I forgot that formation. I really like that one. Oh yeah. Formation's a great one too. And then on, just uh, honestly, all of them. I can't Her remember. little medley in the beginning after she does like uh dangerous in love and then she does flaws and all. And uh, then she does one plus one. one. I That's love one. one plus one. That's a great one. Yeah. And then she does like a couple new, uh, a couple other songs. What's that the song hers? you wish she did? Also, yes, I did see that she brought up Meg Thee for Houston and no, I don't care. <laughs> I do care. I'm jealous. <laughs> I was going to say, I care a lot. I but do care. Care. I'm jealous. But I'm happy that she did it in Houston, obviously. I know. It's fun. Um, a song I wish she did. I wish she did um, Resentment. From that original. Yeah. I love that fucking song. Dance for you. I wish she did dance for you. Dude, I know the choreography to that dance. I taught myself in my room. That's what I was saying, Brittany. I was like, or she did like Rocket. Rocket, yeah. That would, would be crazy. crazy. Yeah. Um, or even if she did um like, Cherry? Sor- Sorry would have been a great yeah. one. Um, Hold Up would have been cool. Mm-hmm. Sandcastles. People don't like that one. I think all I love I that song. Ge- I was telling Jordan, I genuinely think All Night is one of her best songs she's ever done. Dude, that album top to bottom is so is fucking so good. good. So fucking good. And even then, there was only one song on that album that was kind of like, eh, Which I don't one? love that one. Is it Forward? Because that's one of my favorite ones. No, no. It's um the one that she did, the remix with like the Dixie Chicks or whatever. Oh. 
It's like uh it's like the it's like more of a country kind of freedom. It's not freedom. That's the no, not Lamar freedom. One. The way I can't remember the name of anything. I can hear the melody in my head, but I'm trying to get to the chorus so I can remember the name of Is it. Is it Don't Hurt Yourself? No, I like that no, one. No, it's not Don't Hurt Yourself. I think that it's like the oh, Daddy Lessons. Yeah, Daddy Lessons. That one I was like Love Drow, one of her best songs. Yeah. Wait, no. What was the last one you said before Daddy Lessons? Six Inch? No, I like that one. Don't Hurt Yourself? Yeah, that's the one I didn't really care for. I liked Daddy Lessons. Yeah. Yeah. The the Don't Hurt Yourself, I was kind of like, eh. I still love it, just not as much as I love it. It's the just others. such a good album. From top, top to bottom. bottom. Okay, this one's from Bianca. She said, how do you know when someone is the one? Drew, would you like to offer some advice? I mean, my mom told me this a long time ago, but she basically said, like, you know, it's the one where you can think of, like, the most disgusting thing you would ever have to do for your partner if they ever needed you to. Like, if it was, like, ne- a necessity mm-hmm. that they needed you to, like, do something for them, like, forever. And it doesn't bother you to think about doing it. Yeah. That's what she told me. I didn't have to ask myself. Is That's what he I was going to say. It's like, gonna, I didn't have to ask myself. You won't, need, you won't need to ask yourself that. And I think it'll feel easy as someone yeah. who's been in a relationship where it didn't feel easy the whole time. Like yeah. it should not feel like that is not normal. Instead of, like instead that. of like the, instead of the anxiety that you feel when you think about like, is this person the one you feel almost like a nervousness because you realize they are. And that part's scary. You know what I'm saying? Like, Realizing that you love someone beyond measure, beyond money, beyond like situation, like you love someone so much that it would like if you were to die, you'd want to die at the same time kind of thing. Like that realization and coming to terms with it is the scary part. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's like when you think about it, you won't think like, I wonder if this person's the one you'll think I'm really fucking scared because of how much I care about this person and like love this person that's how I internalized it but that's how I knew like I I knew too because I didn't have to ask myself if I thought he was the one it's almost like what you said earlier about like sometimes your body reacts first like your however you you uh internalize whether it's negative or positive so if it's negative like I'm telling you right now I like I'm a firm believer in my body like reacting yeah Yeah. like like if your brain won't accept it your brain your body tells you yeah yeah that kind of thing it's this it's in the same vein as that where it's like it's almost like a physical reaction to it. Like you feel almost like I felt afraid, like I felt scared because I felt like I've never, ever loved someone like this. I've never loved someone so deeply and so like truly. And then I think also, too, like you can have you could go on the craziest trip in the world and have fun or you could sit next to each other and not talk at all and still have fun. Like it's just that's a corny way of describing it. But I think when you know you don't ask, you just come to terms with the fact that you do kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? That's how I knew anyway. But yeah, I'll let you know when I know. <laughs> um, okay, this next one's from Bailey. She said, do you guys have your Halloween costumes picked out? Yes. Well, I, I have a few. But I have like one. I have three in my head. Um, I think a couple of them will be more so just for funsies, like just for me to like. I want to try it and see how it looks. And then if it looks cool, I'll take pictures. But if not, then no one ever has to Yeah, because I'm only going to do one costume. So I feel like I always plan for so many. And then I end up picking one. And then I'm like, I wish I picked a different one. So I'm going to pick one. And I like to be gay characters every year. So the, I mean, one, I picked is, the one I picked is pretty straight. So that's why I'm kind of like, I don't know if I want to do it. Well, but that's I why I said maybe that's, maybe that's one you just do. <clears> and then you do another one. Yeah, we'll see. I'm not sure yet. But I, I got really three fun. so far. I like to pick at least five and then kind of shop them around a little bit. But now that I do this for a living, you have to have like fucking 10. Yeah. Unless you want to do the same thing every time, which you could, (laughs) but I'm just too annoying for that. I think I feel that. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. This next one's from Erica. She said, what is one good thing and one bad thing about your new life from working on social media? Damn. I think we talked about all the good things at the very beginning. Like, yeah, I mean, like the good things, they, they are, they outweigh the bad things a million to one. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's just, I think it's just general, like, you know, the obvious things are like getting to work from home, like getting to take care of people you love, um, getting to do cool work opportunities, like get in, like, you know, get into like an industry that's very heavily saturated and hard to get into unless you're a Nepo baby. Um, so those parts are cool. 
obviously. And then like, you know, the PR, like that's cool. Like all those things are cool. They're very, very cool. They're very awesome. And they're like, um, very specific right to this job. So those parts are great. And all the good stuff far outweighs the bad. Yeah. Um, I would say the bad stuff would be, I think I, I like, I'm already really heavily analytical about who I am as a person, mm -hmm. but it's like times 1 billion online. Yeah. Because I never want to come off in a way where, you know, I can offend someone or hurt someone's feelings. Yeah. Or same, like, same. I talk about something I like and maybe they don't like it. And it makes it seem like, you know what I mean? Like, it could, I can could yeah. give you a billion examples, but yeah. I think that to me, that's like one of the hardest parts, I think. Yeah. This. It's like, it's just a constant microscope on top. Yeah. And yeah. A, an awareness that you have to carry at all times. Mm -hmm. And I've even talked about this before where it's like, the problems that you have with this job are problems that you would never encounter in any other job. Like no matter what fucking job, no matter how many you've had, if you haven't had this one, I'm not even, not even a fucking actor. Cause they're held to much different standards yeah. than influencers are for obvious reasons. Like people treat them like gods and then they treat us like um, we're right below them. So it's kind of like, it's just like a different hierarchy. So we're held to different standards, I think, because we're more accessible than traditional yeah. actors and singers and whatever, right? Um, but the problems that you have as this is something that only other creators can relate to, which is why I think it's a really good idea to make friends with other creators and like have like a community that you can lean on when you have problems, when you have like issues, when you want to talk through something. Like, I'm so fucking grateful that I have such wonderful creator friends. Like, they just so happen to be creators, but that's how we met was through the space. Mm -hmm. But we have such a solid foundation and relationship that I can ask them for advice or I can lean on them when I, you know, I'm like, hey man, like, have you encountered this before? Like, how did you handle it? Like that kind of stuff. Um, that's why I just think it's a good idea to build community. I think that part's important. Yeah. Um, but I would say the worst part is probably privacy and like, uh, boundaries. Like, yeah, they're gone. Like when you become a fame, uh, uh, I'm not even going to say famous person, but when you become someone with a public platform and you're a public person, um, especially as like a social media person, you have no boundaries. Like there are no more. And when you exert them or you, you talk about what bothers you, there are always people that are like, well, you're, that's just who you are. You chose it. I never said I didn't like, it's like one of those things. Like I never said that I hate this life and I hate this job and I hate all of you. I, what I said was this is hard and it's very possible for things to be hard. And there, and uh, other things that are harder existing in the same world. Yeah. Like it's very possible for all those things to be true at once, but it's just like, it's privacy and boundaries. Like they're gone. Like we, when you, agree to do this and you have this like very honest and frank conversation with yourself where you're like, I'm going to be a public person. What does that entail? One of the things you should tell yourself is that you have no right to any privacy anymore. You don't have right to a privacy. You don't have right to boundaries. You, like those are just, that's how it feels. And that's the part that's like hard. That's how it feels because that's how it is. Yeah. And so like with that too, like when, if you're already naturally someone who has a really hard time maintaining boundaries yeah. outside of this career yeah. in this, it's like times a it's billion times one. I could it's be like, having, yeah. Like I, I could give you a billion examples. Like I'm out and about and you guys would say like, no, you, you, like if you're having a bad day, you don't have to take pictures. Yes, I do. You will. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yes, and that's, do. and that's the thing <laughs> is like, and that's okay. Like it's not okay, but it's a reality. And that's just what I have to come to terms with, which yeah. is like, it's, it's like a, that's why I said, it's a very, very, very minute give. Um, well like given it's a give and take, but it's not, it's not like one that's so huge. It like, this is the worst job in the world. Cause no, that's not it's the just case. Like, like when you have any new job, you have like new, new issues. Like every job you have doesn't have the same yeah. thing. Sometimes they do. There's similarities, but it, it's like a whole other thing. Like it's a new thing. Yeah. There are just aspects to this job that I did not think I was ever going to have no. to come to terms with or deal with or, or make peace with. That's the, that's the shitty part is like, sometimes, sometimes there are things that happen to you as a public person and there's nothing you can do. And like, you guys know about this cause I've talked about my mental illness, but my lack of control, like it feeds into my mental illness. Like I, I need to be able to control things at all times. I'm like neurotic. Like that's like what I am. So that part is hard. Like that part is hard coming to terms with. It's hard like accepting. And you know what's so funny? When I had ER on my show, 
I was like explaining something to them and I was telling them like, this is a very like champagne problem, like in the grand scheme of things. But I was talking about privacy. I was talking about like boundaries and stuff. But that's not. Well, and that's what they said. They yeah. were like, I think to you it's a champagne problem, but it's also just a really big problem. It doesn't have to be something that's like less of a problem than others. Because obviously like you can't compare like being murdered and then like someone showing up to your house. You know what I'm saying? You can't, con you can't compare those two things because they're not in the same. No, vein. they're not the same, but they're both bad. One's infinitely worse, but they're not comparable at all. Well, and it doesn't mean that like, just cause that one's bad. It doesn't make the other one like you have to not get over bad. it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and that's what they told me. They were like, just because there are worse things that exist in the world doesn't mean that you have to make peace with bad things that happen to you. Mm. And I was like, because people tell you that you have to. Have I you been talking is, to my therapist? Yeah, or? Which is ridiculous. Like, yeah. <laughs> but that's like that's easily the worst part, if in my opinion, is is that. And it's it's not just that, it's everything that comes with it. It's like second guessing interactions with people. It's mm -hmm. like getting scared about something you said that you didn't mean. And in the sense that you said something and you're like, oh, I should have made it more inclusive. Like that, because that's how I think. Mm. And that's not a big ask to be more inclusive. It's just like I constantly feel like uh, you have to just be aware of your surroundings at all times at, at all, what you say, how you look, what face you make. Like it's like that high level of like perfection we have to maintain yeah. like, throughout everything is exhausting. So I because would, you're being perceived on a grand out of context. Scheme. Yeah. Out of, out of context <laughs> at too. all times. Yeah. That's, that's the hardest part I would yeah. say is like the, the boundary thing and, um, the privacy and also, but I will say too, to that same note, my audience, like 99% of the time is, is so like 99% of you overall, all the time are wonderful and great. And you're so, even when I express like, Hey, this is a boundary, please don't cross it. I feel like you guys are so warm and receptive to it. And you're very, very understanding of it. And I also see you guys like correct other people too, in my comments and stuff like that, which I genuinely really love and appreciate. Like, I'm so thankful that it, my community is so um, receptive, and receptive understanding and understanding of. of it. Yeah. Like you guys are so, so fucking awesome. And I'm, I'm very grateful for that, but that's just something, you know, something you have to kind of come to terms with. Yeah. You get used to it. It doesn't yeah. make it any easier, but you just get used yeah, to it. Yeah. It's just something you figure out how to navigate. Yeah. Cause you would think like from the outside that the hardest part would be like comparing yourself. Cause that is part like that's, that's tough. Right. Like, I mean, yeah, it's like, somewhat of an aspect yeah, yeah. where you're like, Oh, so-and-so is doing better. Like, I don't even think about that. That's not even, that's not even on my I'm fucking not even brain. Thinking about yeah. I'm so much more worried about people finding out where I live or where me and my brother like to go to the gym or like, you know what I mean? Like I'm so much more worried about shit like that than those like things that I would think when I, before we got to do this, that I would be worried about. Yeah. Same. Like I've, I've talked about this too before. I don't know if I've ever talked about it on like an interview or something, but I've talked about how, like when I was a kid, um, and I would see famous people, I'd be like, you know, and they're, they, they would say like, please don't take pictures of me. Don't follow me. Don't ask me to do things inappropriately. Or you see those videos that people laugh at when, um, you know, celebrities freak out at paparazzi, which is obviously a much well, different, so much different, yeah. different scale. But my point being like, you see people have these very public freakouts because they cannot handle their privacy being breached at all times. And when I was a kid, I used to see that. And I used to be like, well, I mean, you're rich and famous. So like, what do you care? Like, that seems like a really small price to pay. Cause, because that's just how I saw it. Right. Because you see all the things they get to do. You see how rich and famous they are. And you're like, who gives a fuck if people want to follow you and take pictures. And thankfully I'm not on the level where I have anyone following me taking pictures. Well, paparazzi, I don't have anything like that. But now that I do this for a living, I fucking get it, man. Like I get, I get why people freak the fuck out when they follow them home and they, find out where they go to the gym and they find out where they eat and they find out where they bank and they find out where they go to the doctor. Like that is very real. That's very real. And it's very, it's happened to me many times. It's happened to me at the bank. It's happened to me at my gynecologist. It's happened to me at, at the, vet. the vet. It's happened to me at my brother's high school. Yeah. Um, I had someone who doesn't even go to my high, my brother's high school. Like he's no longer in high school, but I had someone who like worked in the office and looked him up to find out if he was related to me. And she confirmed it she's a fucking adult. Like that's, that's so inappropriate. That's so weird. And it makes me uncomfortable. Like I really hate it. And it's also because my brother didn't ask to be involved at all. Like when I told you all that I cut him out of shit, 
on purpose when he was still in school. I was not kidding. And I didn't, I didn't tag him in shit. I never posted pictures of him. I never recorded him because I don't like that. Like, I think it's just unfair to like latch on to someone else because they're related to me kind of thing. And no matter how many times I said, like, I would ask people, and this is not you guys, this is like people that aren't, I wouldn't say they're like big fans of mine. They just know me. It's just like, you know, they, they would say things like, well, you know, you're, that's just who you chose to do this. He didn't, you know what I mean? Like, so that's, it's just one of those things where I feel like you don't know what's going to happen to you till it happens. And then you have to be graceful about when it happens in your reaction to when your reaction to it, no matter how violated you feel, no matter how like just icky you feel like when I, when that happened to me at the gynecologist, I like went home and I cried and I panicked and I switched doctors because I was like, I can't do this. Like this, and it's just, you're in the most vulnerable, like, position. And it's just, like, it feels so violating. Like, it's just, it's so hard to explain. But I hope it doesn't come off like I'm like, oh, my life is so hard. Because it I know it's not. I know it's not. In the very, 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 very grand scheme of things, I know it's not. But those are just, you asked what the, <laughs> what the, what you the shit. You fucking asked, so don't get mad. <laughs> well, you asked, like, and I want to be honest, like, that's the hardest part. But it's, again, it's, it's far and few in between. It's just when it does happen. It's very um, impactful. It's like it's it 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 bothers us a lot. So, <laughs> so it's not something that we we ever thought we would have to. No, nah, it's deal new with, shit. But. It's like new shit to have to deal with. Yeah. So you figure it out. You regroup. You lean on your friends who can relate to your issues, right? And then you move on. Yeah. And then you you get better and you stay in therapy. That's the great part. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. the most important part. <laughs> Okay, this last one's from Mason. They have a few little mini questions in here. That's fine. So they said the first one is, "What would your cartoon outfit be? Like your avatar?" Easy. I get big jeans, that um, and then like a little white crop top with like a high neck, and then a lot of gold jewelry, and then a platform shoe. Mine would be I'd probably wear like an oversized t-shirt, like biker shorts, and then my Converse or something, or maybe like like my favorite jeans and like a crop top or something with like my high top converse or something. Yeah. All right. Their next question is what is your favorite playlist to listen to right now? Spotify makes these ones called day list day lists or whatever. And then it like puts a bunch of shuffled in music in there. It's pretty good. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. I, didn't, I like well, that one. I like a lot of the Spotify playlists that they make for you. Yeah. Like if the, you type in like, made for you and then they'll have like goblin core mix like those ones are pretty good i like those i like the daily mixes those ones are cool me too or the ones that you haven't listened to but they're in the same genre of what you typically listen to they're like new songs i love Yeah. what do they call that one new music or whatever some shit like that not new music friday or like release radar no not those two i'm saying like it's like that but it's curated for you i forget the name of it it's like a daily mix no no, because Daily Mixes have a lot of repeats on there. It's like one specifically curated list. It's so funny because I, I don't work there, but you technically do. So you should know. I don't work there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't work at Spotify. So you should know. But I we, we're huge fans of the Spotify. I just can't remember the name of the place. They have a specific name for it, but it's like new music for you kind of shit. So it's just like based off your genres, they put a bunch of new music in there that you have not listened to. Got it. Okay. Um. Anyways, I think my playlist would be, I've just been listening to Guts, to be honest. Oh, okay. I've been listening to that a lot lately. Yeah, Drew does this thing where she'll pick a new song and tell me, this is so you, Court, and it's like the meanest song you've ever heard. That's not true. That's not true at all. I hear a song that sounds, I'm like, you should listen to it because it's kind of like you. What was the, was there a song on Happier Than Ever that you told me? You're like, this is you. No, Happier Than Ever is one of them. Oh, okay. Um including especially the lyric where she says, you made me hate this city. Hello. No, one of the ones I told you to listen to was Fletcher's like the New York. York. You made me hate New York. Like there's a couple in there. The song off guts that I told her to listen to was, um, the grudge. I told her to listen. That's literally her. I was going to say her aff, her aff. On Fletcher's album, girl in my dreams. I listened to the song healing a lot. And then healing is a great one. Uh, better version. That one made me yeah. want to scream at the top of my lungs. That whole album is really, it's genuinely very good. Shit, what was the song? In Taylor Swift, uh, what's the song they sing at the table? Oh, yeah. 
That's a good one. Uh, what you want it? The one where we tolerate it? Yeah. There it is. That's decent. And that one, we were watching it live and she goes, me, <laughs> literally me. I know I wasn't saying you said that. I'm me. just saying that's an example of you doing it to yourself. That's Toler- a live talk. Ta- I'm just a kid. Okay. The next question is, <laughs> please rank the Shrek movies. I know Drew's going to agree on this. Number one is two. No. Wrong. Why? It's a great one. No, this is high rank though. No, first place, two. Then one. Then three. Then four. The only thing I switch is one and two. You think one is better than two? Yeah, because it's the OG. It's got to be the first no, one. No, the second one's the best one. It's always the first one. Okay. And then the last- second one is just like the expansion of the lore, but the first one is where you get the the genesis of why he is the way he is. Okay. That's important to know. I know. I watched the movie. I think you don't like it because we watched it too many times. We did watch it too many that's times. Why, as a kid, that's but- why she would prefer no, I to do, watch I the do like one. it. Though. The second one we watched, honestly, just as much as more. I love the second one. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, the, the I if I were to measure my likeness of both of them, it's equal. Okay. The only reason one edges out two is because it is the start of the series. Okay. And we must show respect to the first one. We must pay our respects to the you original. You can do that. I will do no such thing. The second one's great, though. So and then the la- their last question is, what was your favorite DS game as a kid? Mm, dogs probably. We had Sims on there. I liked that one. You, I didn't care for Sims. Um, on the DS. Will I download it for my laptop on the way to Perry? Maybe. On your new laptop? Yeah, why not? Okay. I got a big screen. Got a long, we got a long flight. I got to entertain myself somehow. I don't know what else I like to play on there. Do you remember what I used we to We used to play the Pokemon games on there. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember anything past Nintendogs because that's the only <laughs> game I cared about. I don't remember I any of the others. That one. I know you had it, but I don't, I didn't have it. We that shared one. the game. So you definitely played it. I know, but I didn't like it is what I'm saying. Like I, I, I was more so you. Nintendo. I loved being able to like wash them and then teach them how to fetch and all that and take them to the. All of them were too Ula Valley. That's why I didn't like take, them. You take them to the dog show and then you like, you, you try to make them win so you can get more like fancy collars for them to wear and mm-hmm. shit. Love it. I think we had a SpongeBob game on DS that I liked too, but I can't remember the name of it. I don't remember a SpongeBob game. Anyways, I'm going to say Sims. I can't think of any DS games I've ever owned. I don't know why. My brain is Yeah, like I'm kind of forgetting them all too, to be honest. I do remember Nintendogs yeah. specifically, but I remember having so many and I, we had Super Mario. We used to play like Mario. We there had a was a Mario one. Yeah. We had a couple Mario ones. I remember <gasps> Did that. Did we have like a Yoshi Island one? Yeah. I that liked was, that one. That, that one was, was fun. fun. That was a good one actually. Yeah. I can't think of any. Me either. They're I had all like escaping a, I had my like brain. like a mint blue one. It was so cute. I loved it. I had a pink one. Very cute. Yeah. Boy for blue for boys. <laughs> pink is for girls. Remind me of your gender again. Wait, hold on. <laughs> right. This is for girls. <laughs> yeah, I can't think of any other ones. Those are my favorite DS games. Honestly, same. Yoshi Island. That's a good one. And Sims. Those are really That's a solid one. The pick. Sims that I had, though, you like worked at a hotel and um it was like in the middle of nowhere and you could like call aliens to come down wait that one was good and then what i would do is i i just i forgot about that part i'd make them have throbbing bodies in the beds together that's all i was doing sleeping around being a whore (laughs) that's like when i downloaded sims college like when they go away to college Mm -hmm. and i downloaded that when i was in college and I, i used to play it all the time and i remember one of my, like, you pick, like, a life goal after you build your sim, and, like, one of mine was to have six boyfriends at once, and that's why I was, I just picked that one, because I was like, that's hilarious when I do that, because the other one was, like, become a scientist, and yeah. I'm like, nope. No. So I, I did six boyfriends at once, and I got to four, and then I had one class where two of them were in the same class, and then they both confronted me, both broke up with me, and then I was, like, so annoyed, because my sim was sad for, like, a month. Annoying. <laughs> so, <laughs> anywho. That must be how my creator feels with me as their sim. <laughs> I know, girl. I am working on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. That's going to do it for this week's episode of Two Idiot Girls. This one felt like a really long one. It did. You're welcome. But oh, I gosh. love you. We hope you have a great week. If you enjoyed this episode, you can stream other episodes every week. I was waving podcast. too early. It's fine. <laughs> and the video version is always on our YouTube channel. But other than that, we love you. We'll see you later. Bye. 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 Au revoir. Wee wee. Pee pee. Perry. Oh, my God. <laughs>